uh, Robert has prepared a fantastic uh, presentation for a, for a topic that is key in SAP Business One and is units of measure management. You have the agenda here. We're going to cover basic units of measure, uh, the units of measure in, in different documents, how to set them up, the units of measure groups. It's a very comprehensive um, webinar. Uh, this Robert, when we ask Robert to contribute to the webinar program, we always know that it's going to be fantastic content and he really creates like a masterclass on 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 this content and uh robert i wanted to ask you uh that if you can share what the advantages of correctly and and optimizing the units of measure management is going to bring to to companies and to the users that are connected to this webinar yeah actually managing the inventory effectively is, is key to success is understanding how the units of measure operate is fundamental because SAP Business One has a basic way of dealing with uh, units of measure, but also has a very advanced way of dealing with units of measure. So uh, we analyze the process when we are doing the implementation and we set what and we decide with the customer what items are going to be using basic uh, units of measure and which items need to use advanced. But uh, I listed a couple of, of important uh, key things why, you know, the uh, units of measure are very, let's say, key. Those are key for any business. So for accurate inventory management, because we have inventory that needs to be managed correctly. So we need to move, count, and store inventory units the correct way. And it, to maintain a smooth inventory operation to meet the customer demands, because custom all customers have different demands. And if you manage the correct flow of inventory and the correct units of measure throughout the whole process of purchasing inventory and uh, selling, and in some cases production, you are basically um, optimizing the process. And last but not least is to track and manage inventory quantities. Because when you report upon quantities, you need to be sure that you're reporting the correct uh, units of measure. And when using the basics, well, we have we are a little bit limited, but when we use the groups, then possibilities uh, exponentially rise. And that is the, the idea. That is what we need to have. Yeah, exactly. In SAP Business One, basic units of measure represent the primary unit in which an inventory item is measured, bought, sold, and stored. So in this example that we're looking at on screen, in this presentation, we have a purchasing item that is, uh, we have a purchasing unit of measure that is packed. We are purchasing three items at a, at a time. Then we have an inventory item, units of measure that it's each, but we don't exactly know the amount. So in basic units of measure, we don't control the inventory unit. That is something to keep in mind. Then at, we're selling the item in each. So we are selling one at a time. Okay, so the units, the basic units of measure serve as a foundation for managing inventory quantities and transactions within SAP Business One. So the basic units of measure, we define it or typically define it based on the most common unit used for that particular item. So when we choose, it's based on that natural form of packaging. So, this provides us with a standard reference point for all our inventory related activities. So let's, for example, uh, think about a company that sells smartphones. So the basic units of measure for smartphones might be each. But then we can have another company that it's selling uh, liquid products like, uh, for example, a detergent. And for them, the basic units of measure might be liter. So when we configure the basic units of measure in SAP Business One, we have to define the unit name and then we have to define the quantity. So that is part of the definitions. And any other relevant details about each of the items. So those are gonna be uh, reviewed in a little bit in our demo system. So if we go through all the configurations correctly, this ensures the consistency and accuracy of the Inventory management processes. Remember, inventory is managed in every transaction in the system. 
So we have purchasing sales and inventory as our main uh, processes, but there's also production. There is also some other, uh, let's say, processes that involves, to some degree, the management of inventory. So keep in mind that basic units of measure are essential for our day-to-day -day operations. So SAP Business One also allows us to do some more complex uh, configurations for units of measure. But first, we need to understand exactly how basic units of measure work. Let's go right into the system and see a couple of examples to see how the, how the system behaves using standard units of measure. So this is my demo system. And you see here, I have my main menu open. And we are going to delve right into the item master data that is in our main menu, inventory and inventory item master data. So our inside inventory, it's the item master data. That's the first option. Let's go to one of my items. So I have a, a printer here that it's already configured for this example. So I have a, an item that is a printer. And you can see that we have... Um, basics configuration already in place. Now, from just reading the header of the document or the header of the item master data record, I can already I can already know that this uh, printer is using basic unit of measure. And that is very simple to identify because you see here, right below the item group, you have a unit of measure group. Whenever the unit of measure group is set to manual, that means that you're using basic units of measure. That is one key indicator. So that is our first tip. If you go into an item master data and you see that the units of measure group is set to manual, that it's using that item is using basic units of measure. Now, one let's say one key differentiator is also that if we try to get and set barcodes, we are only setting barcodes for a particular Unit, we can't set barcodes for any particular units of measure. So we go in and we set the barcodes for that particular item. So that means that we are also using basic units of measure. So let's start by defining what are the types of units of measure that we have, right? Because we should have types of units of measure. So uh, we have uh, the purchasing units of measure that is in the purchasing data tab that it's Purchasing units of measure name in this case, like you saw on our presentation, I have this pre-configured to be purchased in packs of three. So we are packing, we are purchasing three printers at a time. Then I also have some other additional information that helps me uh, manage my purchasing. So I'm telling the system that the packaging units of measure is boxes of 12. So this helps me get information to my logistics guys, and also to the shipping company. So this is a reference. Keep that in mind, please, because this is not affecting by and in any way how we purchase. This is just additional information that we have available. Okay, so let's go to sales data. That it's our second tab uh, that has inventory information. So in this case, I'm telling the system that our sales unit of measure is each and that the items per sales unit is one. So again, purchasing data, it's a pack and the item per purchase unit is three. So if we go to sales data and we go back to, uh, sales units of measure, you see each and you see the item per sales unit is one. But in this case, we have a packaging units of measure that it's pack and we are have a quantity per package of three. So we have three here. Those are three um, items per pack. Now, let's go to our inventory data. This is very important. So in here, we can define a unit of measure name, but we can't modify the quantity. And it's very important to understand that. Because when you use basic units of measure, you can't control the inventory data. So you can't go in and start telling the system how many items per unit you want at the inventory level. You only define the unit of measure name. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now let's move to um, a couple of examples at the purchasing and sales level.
Okay, so let's open our main menu and go to purchasing and create a purchase order. <clears throat> I worked on two items, but I only showed you one. So we are going to purchase two items. So we're going to purchase the A0005. That is our first printer. I think I'm missing one zero. So that is our printer. And I prepared another item at its terminal pad. Now, um, one particularity about the terminal pad that I'm going to show you before continuing with the document is that this one at the purchase data, it's items per purchasing unit is 0 0.5. Okay, so keep that in mind. We are not using one, we are using 0 0.5 as a purchasing unit. So let's go in and um, add some quantities here. So let's add 100 of the printer and add 100 and let's add 200 of our terminal pads. Now, now when we added the quantities, you see that we have a number of packages. So number of packages <clears throat> are being calculated automatically. So those number of packages are being calculated, taking into account the quantity of this document. Okay, so it's the quantity of the document that is going to affect the number of packages. So it's important to note that, that we have a unit of measure at our item, but when the system calculates, it's going to use the quantity. Now that can be influenced and we will see how, but we also have more information here. So I already displayed a couple of fields that are not normally displayed. One of them is the units of measure code. In this case, we see that it's manual. Every time you see in user measure code, units of measure code at the item level of a document, when you select an item, that means that that item is using basic units of measure. Then we have the units of measure name. That's the one that we gave it. We gave those units of measure names at the purchasing level and then is the items per unit. Those are the quantities of items that come, let's say, as our purchasing units of measure. Now, those are gonna be multiplied by the quantity of the document. Keep that in mind. We usually leave quantities at one, and when we come to our document, we have a one-to-one -one relationship. So that is fairly simple. But in this case, I wanted to, let's say, add more complexity to the mix, so now we're purchasing the first item in packs of three, and then the second item we're purchasing in basically quantities of 0 0.5 each of our terminal pads. So that gives you a slight idea of how the system works when calculating quantities. Now, prices, that is another key thing here that we need to uh, explain real quick is that prices are being calculated based on the price by unit, because when we set this rainbow printer up, we set a price. We set a price as a base price, and that gets actually it's a uh, all of those all of the I, uh, price list that you see here are using the base price as calculation. So what we did when adding that uh, or expressing here that our items per purchasing unit were three, the system uh, automatically multiplies the price by that amount. Okay. Also keep that in mind. It's very, very important to understand how prices and costs work, okay? So depending on what we have as our purchasing, uh, let's say our purchasing list, because we have price lists for purchasing and we have price lists for uh, sales. So the system is going to calculate that depending on certain situations. Now let's go back to our document. So we know now that the prices are being multiplied by the quantities that we have in the items per unit. So now we know that the price that we set by unit is being multiplied by the items that we set or define at the purchasing units of measure. We define, we entered a name for our purchase units of measure, and then we entered a quantity. That quantity was three. So adding that, we now know how the system is calculating. But there is one last thing that I want to show you here, and that has to do with the inventory units of measure. So whenever you see this active, this is active, you can change from no to yes. 
That means that you're not using the inventory unit of measure as a base for purchasing. Now, what is the inventory units of measure? Because I already told you that you don't define that on the basic uh, and on the basic units of measure. So let's change this to see what is our units of measure on the inventory level. So as soon as I change this, I see that my items per unit change to one. So that means that at our inventory level, SAP Business One is using one as our units of measure, quantity. So it doesn't matter if you change the name, you will always have one as your base inventory unit. So keep that in mind because that is how basic units of measure work. Let's go ahead and leave this as no, but change the last one to yes and add this document. So I'm going to add it and view. Now that I have my purchase order, I will copy this to my goods receipt PO. And I will add this too, because I want to see the effect of the configurations that I have. So I will add and view, <clears throat> excuse me. And let's go to the 16, because this is very important to understand what the system is going to do. Because remember, we're purchasing in 0 0.5. That is our items per purchasing unit. We are purchasing 0 0.5 at a time. So let's go and use one of my favorite reports in SAP Business One, that is the Inventory Audit Report. You can access it right from your item master data. So I right click Inventory Audit Report. It's already been filtered by this item. So I'm going to open this. I already have a couple of transactions, but the last one is the one that we need to look at. So on our last transaction, you see that the quantity was multiplied. It changed from 100 to 200. So when we change our item, when we change our unit of measure from being the standard purchasing units of measure to our inventory units of measure, the system automatically multiplied because remember, we are purchasing in 0 0.5 every time we purchase an item. <clears throat> so we are purchasing in quantities of 0 0.5. But when we change that to inventory units of measure, the system automatically multiplied the quantity to do that, let's say that equivalency of value, because we are changing, now we are purchasing one, but we have our purchase units of measure at 0 0.5. So that means it should multiply by, let's say it will up that to 200. Okay, so we were purchasing 100 when we had 0 0.5 as our base unit, but we changed our base unit to one. That is basically twice as much items that we are purchasing. So now you see why the quantity is at 200. Okay, so it's very important to keep that in mind. Now, when I see my cost, the cost is expressed in that unit. So we have the amount, so we have the cost. So if I go to the item inventory data, I will see the cost at that warehouse level because this database is set the cost by warehouse level so i have a 35 dollar cost by each of our units so it's very important to keep that in mind so now let's move quickly to our sales document to see what the effect there is now i'm at the sales order so um let's go and search for a customer and um Let's add our two items, shall we? So we have the A0005, and I missed one zero. So allow me to do that real quick. So let's view and fit column width to add space to all of our columns. And let's go to A00016. Now we see the same behavior of our purchasing documents. Now, the only difference is we, all, we see almost the same fields but there is a big difference here that we are using what was defined in our sales units of measure so let's go and see how we are selling the thermal pads shall we so thermal pads are being sold as um let's say sales so we are selling 1.5 each time we're selling one unit so again 
we are multiplying the quantities of our documents by the quantities defined at the sales unit. Remember that we usually set the units to one. So we, when we are doing implementations, we try to simplify things by adding one at the purchase level and one at the sales level. But if that is not the case, without using units of measure groups, that is our next topic, you can do some sort of advanced uh, management with the basic units of measure, knowing how those units are related to the quantities that we're purchasing at our document. So in this case, I see one particularity here. My first item, my first item that is the rainbow color print printer the 7.5 i'm gonna sell 10 units the system is going to multiply that it will tell me the open quantity it will tell me units of measure name and it will tell me the units the item per unit but it will not allow me to change my inventory units of measure and that happened that is happening because if i go to my rainbow printer and i see the sales data i'm using one so the system already detects that we are using the same inventory level units of measure so there is no way that i can change this inventory units of measure because i'm already using the inventory units of measure that is why i don't have the ability to do that but on the other hand for the items that i'm selling for the second item i'm selling 1.5 i can change that to inventory level and it will immediately default to one so keep that in mind if i do no and i add 10 here and i sell let's add this and just let's add a delivery date because if i don't add a delivery date i will get an error always so let's add a new let's change this from add a new to add and view okay so add and view and now we copy this to a delivery and see the effect at the inventory level because that is the main purpose of this um, webinar to understand not only the units of measure but the effects at the inventory level so let's add this and view it and let's quickly go to our terminal pads and see our inventory audit report that is very important so let's go and see our audit report and now we should have a sale and that sale is for 15 units again we are selling 1.5 and we sold 10 10 multiplied by 1.5 that is equal to 15 again remember guys this is very very important this is something that if we uh mess this up when setting up inventory we need to understand go to the inventory audit report review every movement and if you see a difference go directly to the amounts that you have at your inventory item items per sales unit at your sales tab data at your safe data tab and on your purchase data tab you go to your items per uh purchasing unit okay so that is the effect for basics units of measure so that depends on how you are configuring the amounts but remember that the quantities here are being multiplied by those amounts on the purchase and sales documents and also other key factor is the inventory units of measure that for basic units of measure that is always going to be one so now let's go and move to our more advanced topic that it's units of measure groups so there are four steps that we need to follow always when we are going to define units of measure groups so first things first let's go into our main menu let's go into administration and let's go to setup into inventory now inside inventory you will find a lot of options the first one that we need to identify is the units of measure so the first step before we define it as a measure group is to make sure that we have all of our uh, different definitions for units of measure here. 
you can see that in this data, demo database, I have a lot of uh, units of measure, but I created this last three ones here. So I have the quart, I have the gallon, and I have the pint. So those are the units of measure that I created. Now, one thing to mention here is that you can add length, width, height, and volume. That is important for uh, to a certain degree because um, you can add this if you want to calculate, uh, let's say, volume, height, and weight, and width for, let's say, container uh, movement when you are storing in a container to move uh, items overseas and maybe to transport some of your goods to ship them. And you can also use that for packaging uh, calculations. So in this case, I'm going to hit OK. Now, that is the first step. The second step is going into units of measure groups and defining our units of measure group. In this case, we have to name the group and code the group. So in this case, I'm going to add one more because I already had one there as test. So I'm going to add liquids too. And that liquids too, right after I enter my group code and my group description, I need to double click on this gray box here to define the structure of my units of measure group. If I try to update here, I will get an error because I don't have anything defined. So please, when you enter your code and you enter your description, double click. Let's go and find our base unit of measure. So that will be the pint. So let's find the pint and add it as a base. Then I will add the quart as part of this uh, units of measure group. So a quart, a quart is basically equal to two pints, okay? And then I will add one gallon. So that gallon, it's equal to eight pints. So now we have our rules of conversion. I will update this and I will update the groups. I will get a message. So changing units of measure conversion rules results in the update of the related units of measure prices. Do you want to continue? Keep that in mind because remember that units of measure groups will allow us to do more than just the normal basic behavior when talking about movement of goods and calculation of prices and other settings. Now that we've done that, that we have done that, let's move to our third step. Our third step is to create our units, let's say our items. And if we already have the items, it's to change the units of measure group to the units of measure group that we just defined. So in this case, I'm going to uh, find one of my items. I already have one. If I'm not mistaken, it should be this one. But I'm going to use this one and I'm going to uh, duplicate this one for this video purposes. And I'm going to change the code to 23. And I'm going to add this as a 20, 20W40. That's gonna be that uh, setting for this, um, for this oil that I'm basically creating here. So I have a 20W30, maybe it's a 20W40. So now it's, I have defined my description and my item code, I need to change my item group from liquids to liquids too. Now, I already have, since I, I'm changing the uh, units of measure group, the system will tell me, look, I'm going to reset everything. Are you sure you want to do this? It's going to reset all the settings that I already have for sales, purchasing, etc. So I'm going to click yes. Now, everything was reset. I don't have any barcodes. I don't have anything. But let's start with the barcodes. Now, the barcodes are now set by the units of measure that we define in the group. So I can add one or more barcodes for gallon, one or more barcodes for pints, and one or more um, barcodes for quarts. So it's really important to keep that in mind. So now you define barcodes by units of measure. Again, in this case, pint, quart, and gallon. Now, what about prices? So let's set a price, but the price is set at the unit, base unit. The base unit for this unit of measure group is the pint. So let's add um, 
let's add 350 as our unit price. Okay, so I will add this as $3.50, and I'm gonna click here because if you see the button is telling me that it's to define units of measure prices. So, yes, I need to define that because I only define in the base price that is the pint. So, how do I define the rest? So, I click on the units of measure code and I select the quart. And the system will automatically calculate that for me because I already gave it a base price for the pint and the pint is the base unit. Now, one thing to keep in mind, guys, is that I can manually modify this price so I can set this and change it. If I don't, uh, maybe I want to set a defined price. I don't want the system to calculate that for me. But in that case, it will be more work. So the system, if you set the base price for your base unit, in this case, the pint, the system will automatically calculate for quarts, quarts and it will automatically calculate for gallons. You see the math there. So I will update this. That's the first change. So now multiple barcodes by each of our units, multiple prices by each of our units. So let's go to our two, our three tabs that also have changed. So the purchase tab. On purchase tab, very different. Now purchasing units of measure code. Remember, when we use basic, in here, we only have two fields. So now it's for us to select the purchasing units of measure code. In this case, it's gonna be the gallon. Okay, so it's a gallon. And another very important change is the packaging type, because now you can select the packaging type. And let's say that we purchase in gallons, but those are uh, stored in pallets. Okay, so I select pallet and then I hit the three dot uh, button here. And I can add the quantity per that packaging unit. So I'm going to tell the system that I'm storing 12 gallons in one pallet. Okay, 12 gallons in one pallet. So I'm going to update this. So the system is already telling me, okay, you're purchasing gallons. Those gallons are the equivalent of eight pints. And you are packaging those eight gallons in pallets. The quantity per pallet, it will be 12 gallons. So I have everything already defined. Most of it was defined automatically, calculated automatically by SAP. Going into sales data, same thing. So now this one is going to be sold in quartz. So I'm going to select quartz, but then I'm going to change the packaging type. I'm going to package this in boxes. And I'm going to package this in boxes of six quarts. So now you see that I have the definition for the sales units of measure that's going to be quart, that is equivalent to two pints. And now I have the packaging type as box that has six quarts in it. So, okay, now we know that using units of measure groups allows us to have more flexibility before i move from here i want to show you one more thing in purchasing data and sales and sales data if i open my window for units of measure and package types i can add length width height volume and weight for each of my sales units of measure but i can also at the same values for the containers, box, pallet, barrel, etc., etc. I can define package type dimensions by package type and associate those package types with my sales units of measure independently. So I can have a quart that is will be uh, let's say related to a box, and I can have a gallon related to a pallet. The pallet will have its own dimensions, and everything is going to be calculated automatically by SAP. That is the beauty of using units of measure groups. Okay, so last but not least, how about the inventory level? Now, it's the same thing. Now, remember, this is a major, major recommendation. Always use the lowest unit of measure as your base unit. That is a best practice. So in this case, we are using the pint. So I have the pint as my base unit of measure. 
And I can also define an inventory counting units of measure. So I'm going to do that right away. So I'm going to select this to be counted in quarts. And I'm ready. I'm ready to create my first item master data. So now I have one item. Let's go and use it in a couple of transactions. Let's purchase it and let's sell the item. Now let's go to purchasing and open a purchase order. This is gonna be quick. Uh, I'm going to select my vendor and I'm going to select my item. Remember, this is very important to understand. As soon as I select my item, the same behavior starts appearing. So I already have my number of packages as the calculated uh, taking into account my quantity that doesn't change, but there is slight changes here that are very important to note. First one is the item code, the unit of measure code. This unit of measure code was empty before. Now we can change that. Why? Because we have multiple units of measure code. So I can go to gallon, I can go to pint, I can go to quart. So that means that I can purchase in any unit of measure that it's part of that unit of measure group. I'm not bound to one unit of measure. I can dynamically select from this list. And that is the first key change. Now, another key change is that I can also use the inventory unit of measure, but I, by doing that, I automatically change everything to pint. The system will do that for me. And I can go back to no, and the system will again calculate. Another thing that to keep it to keep an eye on is that we have a unit of measure group name now. So we can easily relate to the unit of measure group if we want to go and see how the conversions are going and maybe we want to change something up, some of the rules that we have there. So right now I have everything I need to generate this purchase order. So let's go ahead and generate it. And let's not just generate the purchase order. Let's go and copy this directly to our goods receipt and see the effect in inventory. So let's add this in view and let's quickly go to our inventory because that is the best part. So let's go now and check on our inventory data. We have 800 units, but we only purchase 100 gallons. So the system is already automatically multiplying and it's not just automatically multiplying, it's automatically setting my item cost. So I have my cost at the base level, $3.5 for each pint. So if I add that, that will give me $7 for a quart and that will give me $28 for a gallon cost. But it's already auto calculated by SAP. So what happens if I go into my uh, inventory audit report? I'll see that I have my Purchase of 800 units at $3.5 for each pint. Okay, great. So let's now go and sell that item. So I'm going to copy the code and we are going to generate a sale. Same thing, directly to sales, sales order, any customer. We're gonna, we're not gonna get picky here. And we're gonna copy our item number. Same thing, same behavior. But in this case, we now see that we are selling in quarts. So quarts, it's our selling unit, units of measure, and items per unit sold is two because we are selling two pints each time we sell a quart. A quart. So this is important because quarts are here, are already shown, but we also have the packages. So the packages are being calculated. So if I go in and I check in, if I had all my settings defined, I could go in and check my volume and weight calculations. In this case, I don't have anything defined, but it's very important to note that everything is related in the system. So it's very important to keep in mind where we need to do the definitions. Now, I will add the sales order and, well, actually I can't add sales order without delivery date. So I added delivery date, I add the sales order, now we will add a, we will add a delivery. We will copy this to a delivery and we will go and see the effect at the inventory level. 
Remember, everything that we did so far has been defined the units of measure group and add that to the item. All the other calculations have been done automatically by SAP. We only define the rules. The system is doing the math for us. It's doing the calculations for us. Now we did the delivery of 100 quarts, but what happened in, at the inventory level? Let's go and investigate. So we are going to execute our inventory uh, audit report again. This is one of my favorite reports in SAP Business One. It has a lot of flexibility, capability uh, to uh, you know, show a lot of information. So in this case, I will see that I have one delivery but it's actually subtracting or it's actually issuing 200 units because a quart is actually the equivalent of 200 pints. So we have 200 pints less inventory, $3.5 cost. And that is the transaction value at the inventory level. Now, before we move to the last part of this uh, webinar, that is showing you the last transaction in which you can uh, practically leverage the possibilities and flexibilities of this units of measure group, I want you to notice one thing. So we added to the item master data, the units of measure group. So that is a manual setting, change from manual to a units of measure group. But you have one more setting that you can set and it's at the units of measure group the units of measure group to the item group definition. Again, item groups are usually used for accounting, but when you define units of measure groups, not to be confused with item groups, units of measure groups, you can set them as default right here. So each of the items that you create that are bound or are linked to this item group, you will automatically inherit inherit this default units of measure group. Okay, so that it's the two settings or the two uh, places in SAP that we can set a units of measure group. So we can set it at the item level or we can set it at the item group level. Okay, so let's move to our last uh, part of the webinar. And that is the last demonstration that it's an inventory inventory transactions, and we will go to inventory counting. Now, inventory counting is very flexible when you use units of measure groups, because if I add my item here and I hit tab, you will automatically default to the court because I add this as my inventory units of measure for counting, but I can change that at the inventory counting document level. So I can change that I want to count pints and it will automatically change the item per unit and, or I can change that from pint to gallon and it will automatically change the items per unit. So that is the last part of this whole presentation that you can add change quickly at the inventory counting level, the units of measure. Now we don't talk about the inventory transactions like goods received, goods issued, because those, all of those, are using or will always default to use the inventory units of measure. Now, here are some key points about this presentation, about this webinar that are very important for you to keep in mind. So remember, the units of measure are defined globally for a company. So we define units of measure from the administration of the system, okay? A units of measure group can manage functions related to size, such as barcodes, such as pricing, such as packaging for each of the units of measure. This is key. We are not talking about basic here. You can have barcodes, pricing and packaging by units of measure. Very, very important. Third, if the item master you define, every time you define an item master data, you have three types of units of measure. This is very important. We have inventory sales and purchasing. Now, remember, when you use basic, the inventory units of measure, you don't have control over the quantities there. It will always default to one. We proved that today, so keep that in mind. Basic, inventory units of measure, 
you can change the name of the unit of measure, but the quantity at the basic configuration level will always be one for inventory unit of measure. Fourth, there are four main steps for setting up units of measure groups. These steps are always need to be followed in the same order. So we first need to define our units of measure, the ones that we're gonna use. Maybe it's liquids, maybe it's uh, units of measure for paper, maybe it's units of measure for uh, weight. Whatever units of measure we need, we first define units of measure. Right after that, we go in and we define our groups. Remember, another key thing to have to keep in mind is always default to the lowest inventory unit. That is the best approach for simplicity and order. Third step is to assign the units of measure group to the item directly. So, and this is one thing that um, I want to explain right here because I didn't demo that, is that you can assign units of measure groups to items directly or to item groups. So all items that are part of that item group will inherit that uh, units of measure group. That it's usable for some scenarios. So that is another flexibility aspect of the units of measure groups. You can define them and bind them to item groups or go directly to the item master data and set them there. Fourth, we can set the fault values in the items for units of measure. So we set the fault values, the fault values for purchasing, the fault values for sales units, the fault values for inventory units. So, and again, at the inventory level, we can define a standard units of measure for counting, inventory counting. So the fifth uh, key point is that all alternative units of units in the group are related to the base unit by conversion rules. Remember, if we use the approach of using the lowest units of measure, all the subsequent units of measure will be connected or related to the base unit by the conversion rules that you are going to put in place. Those conversion rules can, be, can vary from one type of uh, group to another. And last, we have to keep in mind that the inventory units of measure for an item will be used for all inventory postings for that item. Again, inventory units of measure. This applies to both the basic setting and the uh, item group or the group units of measure group, sorry. Now, one thing from that last part only applies to units of measure groups, and that is that this value is not changeable. Because remember, for basics, it's always one. But in this case, for the units of measure that you define as part of a group, once you have transactions for that unit of, for that item, the inventory units of measure will never be able to change. So that is really important to keep in mind. You can do changes to certain units of measure because you can change the group that the item is part of. But that to do that, you need to copy the same group and do changes to the other um, units of measure that are part of the structure, but the base unit that you have at the inventory level, that will not be able to change. Well, Robert, thank you so much for the content you prepared. It was, like I mentioned at the beginning, a masterclass. I hope everybody enjoyed it as much as I did. I always learn so much with your webinars, Robert. So thank you. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Uh, we have some questions, and uh, Robert, you let me know if it's uh, if it's a question that has a very long answer. Then we can we can uh, contact the users directly. If not, if you can give a, an answer, then fantastic. Okay, I'm going to read them to you. The first one is: Can you explain the impact of units of measure on reporting and analytics in SAP Business One? Well, that is a fairly simple question. I mean the the documents, as we saw in the presentation, you use a, a unit of measure for each of the documents. For inventory reports, it's very 
easy because you only have one unit of measure. So you will always default, the system will always default the reporting at the inventory level to the inventory uh, unit of measure. And when we report over purchasing and sales, those depend on the selection. If you're using advanced uh, units of measure groups, if not, well, those will default to the standard basic units that you use on the on the documents. Uh, for re one last thing is that for inventory reports, you will not be able to change the units of measure. That is very important. SAP defaults all reporting uh, based on inventory to the inventory units of measure. Okay. Okay. So you cannot change that for reporting. No, for okay. inventory reports, no, because that okay. defaults automatically to the to the inventory level. Yes. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. That's that's good to know. Um, another question we have is, what are specific considerations when integrating third party systems or e commerce platforms with SAP Business One? regarding units of measures? That is not a simple question, but I can, let's give up a good answer for this uh, for this time. Actually, yes, it's something to be considered because every platform has different uh, needs for mm -hmm. feeding information. So the interchange of the information and we need to be aware of certain uh, applications like Shopify, for example, they don't manage inventory as a whole. But they do manage the sale unit because they are they are selling, you know. And and then there is some sort of considerations, but those need to be discussed with the technical team doing the, uh, let's say, the integration. Exactly, doing the integration. Okay, exactly. so it is something that we need to give a little thought so that okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, another question is conversion from grams to pounds can be done. Yes, and uh, yeah, actually, um, actually, for the time that we had, we didn't explore no. uh, the more advanced way of dealing with conversion base conversions because maybe you have a length unit that you need to convert to uh, to uh, weight units, or maybe you have weight units that need to convert to liquids. Those types of conversions are, are managed uh, natively by the system, but okay. those needs more work. But yeah, it can be done. It can yeah, be done. The, uh, yes, yes. Okay. This customer manages paints, so they are they are commenting they use grams, pounds, gallons. So it, it can be done. That's the, the short answer, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, fantastic. Someone is also asking if this presentation can be shared. And uh, yes, of course, it will be shared. Uh, it is being recorded, so we'll share it with all of you. And Belinda, if you would love some help, absolutely contact us and we'll set up a, a, a session with you uh, to, to go over this, okay? Uh, so the last question I have here is, when migrating data from other systems? I guess the answer is a little, probably the same as with integrating with third party, but you, you let me know. Um, Robert, for migrating existing existing data with units of measure to SAP Business One, what would be your recommendations? That depends on that is a, on a customer to customer basis because we uh, I I have I have experience with customers that only use basic units of measure. That is really really simple. You only need one template. But mm -hmm. when you have a units of measure group, well, that is a little bit more complicated because you have to work with multiple templates, but that is accounted for from the beginning when you do the implementation because you already know exactly what the customer needs. So it's not simple, but it's not that complex. And we okay. actually, we over the years, we have developed you know a, a very straightforward process. So it will not be complicated. Okay, okay. So I'm guessing this user is, is someone who is going to implement SAP very soon. So... Don't worry, but do escalate this concern with uh, with your team, with your implementation team, and they will take care of that for you. So, so they will help you with that with that migration. And uh, I think we don't have any more questions today. Robert, thank you so much. I know that this topic is was also very close to your heart because you you oh. firmly believe that that this uh, that. Inventory management and units of measure are, are are very important and critical for our customers. So um, I think we were all very lucky that you that you agreed to prepare this content, and uh, I thank you again. Oh, it's been my pleasure, actually.